So we're gonna start in a nice um, reclined pose. So you're gonna bring your block onto your mat and you want your block to just rest right at the tips of your shoulder blades. So it might take a little bit of maneuvering to get yourself there. So you want it so that you can really feel your ribs laying out to the side. And you're gonna bring the soles of your feet together to touch. Your knees are gonna open out to the side. And we're gonna bring our hands up overhead and just let your arms rest just naturally, just as if you were lying on the ground, you need to have them straight up, some really nice bent elbows, spinning your palms up towards the ceiling, taking any last minute shuffles just to get yourself nice and settled. And just taking a couple of deep breaths. Bring yourself to your mat this morning. Bring yourself to your practice. Just allowing your body to move how it wants to move today. Not attaching on any expectations to your flow. you to think about filling your lungs all the way up towards the ceiling with every exhale sending that air out your back of your lungs as you sink further down into the block so as we inhale the breath is going up out of our chest and as we exhale, we're sending that breath all the way out the back of our lungs. So knowing that your breath is powerful and strong and that it's what's going to lead you through your practice today. So giving it a little bit of attention, a little bit of awareness. Letting any last minute niggles or thoughts in your mind just disappear so you can be fully present and this time can be fully for you. slowly bringing your hands back down to your sides and then using your hands to bring your knees together placing the soles of your feet on the ground and then just pushing slightly into your feet just so you can shift that block or your book from underneath your back and then just resetting your spine back down onto the earth placing your hands onto your tummy and just feeling that space that we've already created all in our chest and then just taking your time, maybe rolling onto your side, to slowly make your way up to sitting. We don't want to rush anything. And then once you've got yourself into a nice comfortable seated position, we're just going to twist round to the right. Just starting to open the top of our back. Feeling our low tummy in and out. We want to think about sending our shoulders away from our hips as well as we're sending our hips away from our shoulders. So this idea of pulling and pushing. We're lengthening through our front body. And then coming through the center and then just swapping it up. Twisting to the left. So really grinding your right hip in as you're sending your left shoulder away from that right hip. And then coming through the center. And then you're just going to roll over your ankles, coming onto all fours. And then we're going to pull our hands forward. So we're coming into a melting heart pose here. So knees are hip width distance, keeping our hips up nice and high. 
and then just letting our hands slide forwards as we slowly melt our heart down towards the ground. If the ground feels quite far away, you're welcome to bring a block underneath your forehead here. Just bringing our chest back into that position we had when we were on our block. So this idea of sending the breath out our sternum, or try inhaling into our sternum and sending the breath out to our back body. This is making sure that our elbows are turned so that we want our inner seams of our arms to be pointing down towards the earth. So if you were to bend your elbows, your elbows be coming directly out towards the side. So you should feel a nice stretch in your underarms here. Keeping our shoulders nice and secure and nice and safe. And your next inhale, you're just going to walk your hands back. You're just going to come to sit on your ankles here. If you do have any ankle sensitivity or this isn't very nice for you, you're welcome to just roll up a mat or a towel and just pop that underneath your ankles. So you want to have a little bit of space in between your knees here, so like a fifth distance in between your knees. And you're going to bring your hands so that your fingers kind of line up with your toes and your hands are flipped, so your fingers are facing the front of your mat. We're going to come into almost a variation of hero's pose here. So I really want you to think about grinding those knees down, so keeping that action of sending our hips away from our shoulders. So rolling your shoulders down your back, lifting your chest up, and then if you feel like you've got the strength in your quads and the openness, you can just start to push your knees into the ground as we start to lift our hips up. Being gentle on our shoulders, we still haven't opened them up fully yet. But this idea of blasting our heart open, keeping our shoulders rolled down our back, knees away from our shoulders, hips away from our shoulders, it's going to be something we're going to target a lot in class today. Feeling that strength in your legs. Taking one more breath here. Then exhale, lowering your knees back down and walking your hands forward. We're just going to do some wrist exercises. So just flipping your fingers back towards your knees, coming onto all fours. We're just going to draw some circles with our shoulders here. And then changing directions, just stretching into the wrist getting a little bit of strength into it. And then flipping your palms back round to the front and just picking up your feet, just walking to the front of your mat, just coming into a forward fold. Feet are gonna be hip width distance apart. And you wanna think about shining your hip bones up towards the ceiling here. So even if you have a deep bend in your knees, as long as you've got that action of your hip bones are shining up towards the sky. And just grabbing opposite elbow here, just swaying from side to side. Starting to open up the side body a little bit. And then exhale, bringing your hands back down to the earth. Just keeping that deep bend in your knees as we slowly ragdoll all our way up to standing. Stacking vertebrae on top of one another. And then we get to the top, we're just going to roll our shoulders down our back. Then reaching both hands up above you on an inhale, you're going to grab your left wrist with your right hand, reach that left hand up towards the sky, and then on an exhale, we're going to lean over to the right hand side. Keep grinding that left foot in, making sure when we're leaning over, we're not jutting our hips out to either side, so keeping them central. Biceps in line with the ears here. And then if you want to increase that stretch, you're going to pick up your left foot, and almost as if you were going to curtsy, just stepping your left foot over to the right hand side, bending into that right leg. And you're feeling even more opening all along that left side body. It's a really nice stretch here. So still keeping that idea of that left hand away from your foot. And then inhale, come through the center, just swapping it up. So you're going to grab your right wrist with your left hand here. So on an inhale, reach up, make your right side body really long, keep those hips centered, then exhale, lean over to the left hand side. Line that breath to expand into the 
right side body. And then if you want, you can pick up that right foot. Just step it diagonally behind your left. Deep bend in your left leg. Being really active through your right fingers here. Then inhale, come through to center. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, step back into your all fours, coming into your tabletop position here. And then just doing a couple of quick cat cows on the inhale, dropping your chest down, opening up, and exhale, pushing the ground away. Big curve in your spine here. Inhale to open. Exhale to push away. And then coming through to neutral, <clears throat> pardon me, just shifting your weight forward slightly, bending at the elbows, dropping yourself all the way down to the mat, stepping your leg foot behind. And then you're going to bring your left hand out to the side. You're going to bring it into a cactus shape, but you just want to lift your elbow just slightly so it's moving about an inch or two above your shoulder here. Grounding down with your right hand, you're just going to roll over onto your left hip so your hips are stacked one on top of the other. So we're getting into a pec stretch here. And once you feel comfortable in that position, just with your right hand on the ground, I want you to slightly push your right hand into the ground and you'll feel even more of a stretch into that left shoulder. So it's a tiny, tiny movement, but it can just increase the opening along our left chest into our left arm. Maybe having a quick check in with your breath, see where it is. Then your next inhale, slowly rolling onto your front and then just swapping up. So bringing your right hand out um, to the cactus, lifting your elbow just slightly above your shoulder and then rolling onto that right side. And again, once you find your balance, just having that slight resistance Pressing that left hand into the mat. And just honouring that one side might feel more open than the other one. Just going within your own ability. Sending the breath wherever you need it. And then inhale to roll forward to come through the center, placing your hands underneath your shoulders, making sure your toes are untucked, grinding down into the tops of your feet. On of your feet. On an inhale, you're gonna roll your chin and your chest forward, coming into cobra, blasting your heart forward, forward, shoulders down your back, and exhale to roll down. Inhale into another cobra. Active through the back body, squeezing through the back line, and then. Coming down. Then inhale up to cobra. This time we're going to lift our hands, hover them above the mat. Really squeeze those elbows together. Shoulder blades down your back as if you're putting them in your back pocket. Push the soles of your feet into the, sorry, the tops of your feet into the ground. Then exhale to come forward. Tucking your toes, pushing up to all fours, pushing into plank, and then down to your downward facing dog. So just like our hands were in our melting heart pose. Think about your shoulder position here, wrapping the shoulders in. We talk about you don't want anyone beside you to see your armpit, so tucking them in. Then you can pedal on your feet here, maybe have a deep bend in your legs, send your hips up towards the sky. Really active as we send our hands away from our feet, feeling our back body start to lengthen out. Inhale to look to the front of your mat, exhale to step forward, coming through your forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale forward fold. Inhale to reach those hands up towards the sky, grind the feet down as we reach our fingers away from our hips, and then exhale forward fold. Inhale halfway lift, exhale we're going to step our right leg back, dropping to the back knee, coming into our low lunge on the inhale. Active through your legs, squaring off the hips. 
keeping those ribs nice tucked in. Then bringing our right hand wide off the mat, opening our chest out towards the left hand side. And I want you to think just coming into maybe a slight back bend here. So usually we have a nice straight line with our arms. Just lay that top arm, just float behind you a little bit. Keeping that strong foundation in your legs. Then bending your right foot, just tucking your right foot into your bum. And then if you can, reaching your hand behind you, maybe grabbing onto that right foot. If you don't quite reach it, just keeping active with that opening the chest out. If you do um, grab your foot, just kicking your foot into your hands and resisting it. So sending our left shoulder away from our right hip. One more breath here, then exhale, slowly releasing the foot if you've got it, framing the front foot with both hands, picking up the back leg, and then stepping back to a three-legged downward dog. So bringing that left foot high up behind you. Hips are nice and square here. Maybe you can have a slight deeper bend in the right leg. Then we're gonna bend our left knee so our heel comes into our bum, open our left hip out towards the side, coming into a scorpion here. So our left hip's nice and open. Taking an inhale here, then exhale. We're just gonna come into a crunch. So bringing that uh, knee in towards your nose, then sending it back into our scorpion. Inhale, crunch your knee into your nose, push the ground away. Exhale, back to your scorpion. Then inhale, knee to your nose, crunching it in, then stepping our left foot onto the ground, turning our back foot to 45 degrees, finding your base of your warrior one, so pushing into that back foot to inhale to rise into our warrior one. So we won't get our hips square with that activation of that right hip coming slightly forward, deep bend that left leg. Then we're gonna bring our hands to our low back and we're gonna clasp our fingers together so you're gonna glue your palms together. And then we're gonna send our knuckles down towards the groin as we open through our chest. Then keeping that clasp in your hands, bringing our left shoulder down to our left knee. Coming into a humble warrior. So making sure our left glute isn't firing out to the left hand side. We wanna keep it tucked underneath this. Keep pushing through the baby toe edge of that right foot. Deep inhale here, then exhale, bringing your hands down to the mat, picking up your back foot, stepping back to your plank. Inhale, shoulders will be rushing, drop your knees, exhale, lowering all the way down to the mat, untucking your toes. This time, bringing your hands alongside your body, palms are going to spin in, and then reaching your hands far behind you as you lift your chest, lift your feet, coming into Lucas. Deep breath here, then exhale to lower it down, pushing up to all fours your plank, and then back to your down dog. Deep breath here. Letting go aside if you need to. Then inhale, lift that right leg up behind you. Exhale, step that right foot in between your hands, dropping your back knee. Inhale to rise into your low lunge. Deep breath here. Then we're gonna bend our left elbow, placing our left hand in between our shoulder blades. Our right hand's gonna come on top of our elbow coming into Gomukhasana arms here. So making sure our chest isn't flaying out too much, being active through our back body. And then just letting our torso just tip slightly to the right hand side. So we come into a side stretch and we now get a nice opening for our left hip all the way up to our left elbow. Then inhale through the center, placing your hands onto the mat, pick up your back foot, step forward, coming into your forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold, placing your left hand directly under your face, 
Deep bend that left leg as we open our chest out towards the right hand side. Feeling a nice stretch on the back of our right leg. And inhale through the center, just swapping up right hand directly under your face, deep bend that right leg as we open up to the left. And exhale, both hands down. Inhale to halfway lift, shoulders in line with your hips. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, push the ground away with your feet as we rise up to standing. And exhale to forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Then exhale, hands on the mat, stepping that left foot back, dropping your knee, coming into your low lunge, finding that strong foundation and then inhaling to reach those hands up. Shoulders away from your hips here, keeping that, your core engaged, reaching your hands away, spinning your pinky fingers into your wrapping your shoulders in. Bring your left hand down to the mat as we open our chest out to the right. And keeping this shoulder really strong here, so making sure that your left shoulder isn't sinking in on itself. You want to keep it nice and strong. So this idea of your um, elbows are twisting in. So you've got a really strong base with your arms. Then reaching that right hand behind you, bending that, le that right, that left knee, sorry. And then if you can, catching onto that left foot, if you can't quite make it, just keeping that activation, reaching behind you as your foot comes in towards your body. Right shoulder away from your left hip. And we're blasting our heart up towards the sky. And just keep taking your gaze wherever is comfortable for you. Some people like to look down, some people like to look up, whichever is comfortable for your neck. Listening to what your body's telling you. And then exhale, bringing both hands onto the earth, picking up your back foot. We're going to come back into that three-legged downward dog as we sweep our right leg up towards the sky. And then bending that right knee, opening our right knee out to the side, coming into that scorpion pose. Deep breath here, then exhale, crunching our right knee in towards our nose. Really push the ground away with your hands. Then exhaling back up to Scorpion. Inhale to crunch in, really big rounding in the back. Then exhale to scoop, Scorpion, open that leg out. Then inhale to round it in, placing your right foot in between your hands. Back foot comes to 45. Legs are going to be in train tracks. Inhale to rise up into your Warrior One. And just a quick tip for getting into Warrior One bring your hands onto your hips, straighten that front leg. Really grind into that back leg, and once you feel you really grind into it, then we bend that front leg. With our weight distribution to be nice and equal here. Then we're going to clasp our hands. So you're going to clasp your hands a different way. So a different thumb is going to be on top. So it might feel a bit weird. Roll those shoulders down your back, knuckles towards the ground. Then exhale. Right shoulder to right knee, coming into your humble warrior. Thinking about sending those knuckles away from your body. And exhale to release, bringing your hands down to the mat, stepping back into your plank, shifting your weight forward, exhale, lower it all the way down to the mat. Untucking your toes, hands are going to come either side of your body. On an inhale, roll your chin and your chest forward, reach those hands away, lift your feet, coming into locust pose, active through the back body. And exhale to lower it down, placing your hands onto the mat, pushing yourself up to plank and then back to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that left leg up behind you. Exhale, bring your left foot in towards your chest. Stepping through to your low lunge. Inhaling to reach those arms up. And 
Bending through your right arm, placing your sole, your sole, the palm of your right hands in between your shoulder blades, left hands on top. If the full bind is in your practice where you um, grab your right hand with your left um, hand underneath, you can. If not, you can just stay here. This is absolutely fine. Then reaching that right elbow up towards the sky and then slowly bending over to the left hand side, making sure that right hip isn't jolting out to the side. Creating space in our hips and our shoulders. Taking one more breath here. And exhale, coming through the center, placing your hands on your mat, picking up your back foot, coming through to your forward fold. Inhaling to halfway. Exhale to fold, right hand comes underneath your face, peeling your heart open to the left hand side, deep bend in that right leg. And then coming through the center, swapping it up, left hand down, right arm peels up. Exhaling to center, then inhale, sweeping your hands up to coming into a chair pose. So, sending your hips back and down, grinding into your heels, nice and strong to the legs, hugging those outer hips in, picking your low tummy up, finding strength in your legs, and then really pushing your feet down to rise you up to Tadasana, just spinning the palms forward, closing down your eyes, finding your breath. Exhaling out a sigh if you need to. Just taking a couple of moments rest. And slowly blinking your eyes open. You're gonna to inhale to lift your hands up, then exhale, bringing your hands into that cactus shape. So your elbows are gonna be in line with your shoulders here. And then we're gonna come into a back bend. But before we come into the back bend, I wanna think about your hands coming behind you slightly as your elbows come forward. So I'm just gonna down on my knees so you can properly see this. So your, el your hands are gonna come behind you as your elbows are gonna come forward. So they're gonna almost be like in a 45 degree tilt behind you. So finding that tilt with your arms, pushing your feet into the ground, lifting your um, front body up, then exhaling, coming into a back bend here. So finding length before you come into your bend. Keeping that chest nice and open, sending your elbows away from one another. Then exhaling, hands through the heart center, coming into your forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling, placing your hands onto the mat, stepping that right foot back, coming into a runner's lunge here. So deep bend in that left knee, grinding that right foot down, squeezing the outer hips in, finding your balance as you inhale, coming into your high crescent lunge. So both legs are really active here, pushing the ground away. Then bring our hands to the small of our back, sending our knuckles away from our body as we open our chest up, coming into a small back bend in our high crescent lunge here. Finding the balance by having that strong foundation. Taking one more breath, then exhale, releasing the grip. Placing your hands onto the mat, step, dropping your back knee, stepping back into all fours, and then just bringing your bum down to rest on your feet. Then we're gonna bring our hands, our right hand behind us. So beforehand we had it so that our fingers were facing forward. This time our fingers are gonna face away from us. And we want our, our thumbs maybe just be a couple of inches away from our toes. On an inhale, we're gonna reach our left hand up Grinding into that right hand, lifting our hips up. Then reaching that left hand all the way overhead. Remember, shoulders away from our hips. Rolling the, so our inner seam of our right arm is tucked in. Then exhaling to drop the hips, bring that left hand forward. 
then placing your left hand a couple of inches behind us. You can turn it so that it's at a 45 degree angle if it feels nicer for your shoulder. And then an inhale, we're going to reach our right hand up to the sky as we propel our hips up, chest up, and then reach that right hand overhead. So really active through the glutes here as we push the hips forward, keeping our chest nice and open, reaching with our right hand, and exhale, dropping our hips down, coming through the center. Then just placing your hands onto the mat, tucking your toes, coming back to your downward facing dog. <coughs> and now we're going to spin so all 10 toes are facing the right hand side. So you'll have the pinky side edge of your left foot and the whole of your right foot flat on the mat. And we're going to push our right hand away, sending our right shoulders away from our right hips to get a nice stretch all along our right side body here. Feeling that nice space on our right side. And then shifting your weight forward, keeping your feet in exactly the same position so they should be in a line, and then lifting your right hand up, coming into a side plank. So thinking about that nice strong base with that left hand, pushing, lifting with your left hip up towards the sky, opening your chest. Then bringing that right hand down, coming into your plank, and then just dropping to all fours, coming into your tabletop. And we're just going to do a couple of scap dips here. So hugging those arms in, so your, your, basically your elbow pit, should be called, should be facing front face. I'm just going to push the ground away, coming into kind of a variation of cat cow here. So these are called scap dips. We just want to focus on our shoulder blades. So bringing our shoulder blades far apart, dropping our chest, bringing our shoulder blades together. So pushing our shoulder blades away from one another, then dropping our chest down, bringing them together. Doing that one more time. Letting our shoulder blades come apart and letting our shoulder blades come together, then picking up our back foot, stepping forward, coming through to our forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, sinking your hips back and down, coming into our chair pose, hugging those outer hips in. You should be able to see your big toes here. Finding strength in our legs. Taking one more breath, then exhale to forward fold, and then inhale, reach those hands up, exhale, hands are going to come to our side, spin the palms forward, closing down the eyes, just taking Tadasana for a couple of breaths. And slowly blinking the eyes open. This time we're going to bring our hands to our lower back again. So you might, if you're going to be familiar with this, clasping our hands together, then reaching back, sending those knuckles away as we open through the chest. Inhaling, lifting our chest up, then exhaling, coming into a back bend as we let our hands go down the back of our legs. Keeping your gaze wherever is comfortable. One more breath. Exhaling, coming through the center, and then slowly coming through to a forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift. Exhaling, hands on the ground, stepping your left foot back, coming into your runner's lunge. Getting your strong foundation as you slowly inhale to reach up into your high crescent lunge. Scissoring those legs. Keeping those shoulder blades lit, sorry, those shoulders lifted. Then bring your hands into that cactus shape. And just like we did when we were standing, hands are going to come behind as your elbows are going to come up. Lifting our low tummy up, lifting our side body, then exhale, just coming into a back bend. Nice expansion through the chest. Taking one more breath here, then exhaling, coming through the center, 
bringing your hands onto the ground, framing your front foot, then stepping back, dropping your knees, coming into all fours, and then sinking your hips down. And then we're gonna come into those rolls again. If you want to come up even higher on the fingertips of your back hand, you can. So our hands are gonna face away from us. Kind of so your thumb is lined up with the um, edge of your mat. Then an inhale, we're gonna reach that left arm up towards the sky as we lift our hips, we propel our heart forward, reach that left hand behind us, and then rolling that chest up towards the ceiling. Thinking about sending those hips up and away to the front of your mat as you send your hand, your left hand to the back of the mat. One more breath and exhale, slowly dropping the hips down, bringing your left hand forward. Then swapping up to the left thumb, sorry, left hand is going to come behind you, right hand in front, and then on your inhale, lifting your hips up, blasting your heart open, reaching that right hand behind you. And then think about that right shoulder, peeling out towards the right hand side, so you can really get expansion through your shoulders here and your chest. So hips away from shoulders, opening up your collarbones, then exhaling, dropping your bum down, just spinning your hands up towards the ceiling, just closing down your eyes for a brief second. Just thinking about that pose, thinking about that shape. And bringing your hands onto the mat, and slowly making your way back to downward facing dog. Spinning all 10 toes to the left hand side now. So you're going to be in the knife edge of your right foot, left foot on the mat, finding a nice stretch all along your left side body. Keep grinding your hands down. Then shifting your way forward into a high plank, then lifting that left hand up, coming into a side plank. If you need to move your feet about a bit, you can. If you want our feet to almost be in a line with one another. Pushing the ground away with that right hand, lifting the hips up, keeping that space in your chest. One more breath here. Then exhaling, bringing your hands down to the mat, and then you're bringing your knees down to the mat. We're just gonna do a couple more of those scap dips, really focusing on pushing and grinding your hands into the earth. So on an inhale, push your hands in, separating out the shoulder blades. Then exhale, letting your chest sink down as your shoulder blades come together. Inhale to push the ground away, create space in your back, closing the chest. Then dropping the chest down, doing the opposite so the chest becomes open and the back becomes restricted. One more time to push it away and exhaling to close it off and picking up your back legs and then just stepping through to a forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhale to forward fold, inhale to rise all the way up then exhale, bringing your palms forward, closing down your eyes, coming into your Tadasana. Just quickly having a recap of everything that we've spoken about in class. This idea of blasting our heart away, sending our shoulders away from our hips, broadening through our chest, strengthening through our back body. Slowly flicking your eyes open on an inhale, moving from your feet first as we find that strength through our legs to lift our hands up, then exhaling hands through the heart centre, coming down to forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling, stepping back into your high plank. Inhaling, shifting your weight over your wrists, exhale, lowering all the way down, untucking your toes, and then bringing your Elbows underneath your shoulders, coming into a sphinx pose. So feet are going to be a little bit more than hip width if you need to create the space for your back. Shoulders away from your ears. Just taking a couple of breaths here. Your chest should feel nice and open. Taking 
you one more breath. Then exhale, lowering your chest all the way down to the mat, placing your hands under your shoulders. If you can, using your strength, pushing up to plank or all fours, then back to your downward facing dog. Inhaling through to plank, then exhaling, spinning on those feet, coming through to your side plank. And then we're just going to set our left knee onto the earth. So we're in a variation of gate pose here. So our hands are in a nice straight line. We're going to reach our right hand over our head. And then as we do that, we start to twist our heart up towards the sky. Reaching our right hand away from our foot. And then exhaling, coming through, just coming through to all fours. And then bring our left leg behind us. And then lifting our left hand up. So the left foot's going to be planted on the earth. Then reaching that left hand up overhead and then grinding down to that right hand so much we can blast our heart up towards the sky. And then coming through to your all fours, tucking your toes, sending your hips back, coming into your downward facing dog. Inhale to look forward, exhale, step to the front of your mat. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale to forward fold. Inhale, grinding down through your feet, reach up. Exhaling, hands through to heart center. Inhale to reach up, exhale to forward fold. Inhale to halfway, exhale to step back to plank. With control, inhale, shoulders over your wrists, exhale, slowly lower all the way down to the mat, untuck your toes, bringing your hands back into that sphinx shape. So you should be able to just touch your elbows here, hands are now number 11. And then we're just going to pivot on our elbows, so we're sending our hands out to 10 and 2 here. And then really grinding down through your hands, you can stay here if this is enough or start to straighten out your hands coming into a seal pose. And if you do think you've got the flexibility and strength in your back, you can just walk those hands slightly closer. Keeping this idea of wrapping your shoulders in so your elbow pitch should be signing up in front. Just taking some nice long breaths into your front body. Make sure you're not dumping into your low back. And exhaling, slowly dropping it down, bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, finding the strength to push yourself up to plank, then back to your downward facing dog. Taking an inhale here, exhale at a sigh. Bringing yourself through to plank. Spinning to all ten toes, go to the right hand side, lifting that hand up, coming into your side plank. Now you can go into the variation we did before where you drop your left knee and you reach across. You're welcome to do that. I'm going to talk you through into a wild thing. So you're going to pick up that right foot and step your toes basically behind your left knee. So you want to be high on your tippy toes of the left knee. You're going to turn your left foot just so it's pointed more towards the bottom of your mat and then really pushing into your legs. You're going to reach your hand over as you spin your chest up towards the ceiling. So coming more into almost a bridge pose here. Shoulders away from your hips, chest up towards the ceiling, really grinding those feet and lifting from your glutes as your hips are up. Then exhale, just slowly bending your legs, bringing your hand back down, coming into your plank, dropping your knees down. Sending your knees back down towards your hips, coming into child's pose, bringing your hands still down beside your legs. And just taking some breaths here before we move on and try wild thing on the other side. So it's quite a joyful pose, it's quite open. It's very in line with the sun shining outside as we shine our heart up towards the sky. Knowing that if you, you can go into the first option, that we've already done so just dropping the lower knee down and reaching you're still expanding through your front body finding strength for the back body into your legs and then in your own time just 
just making your way out of child's pose and coming into a downward facing dog when, you, when you're ready. And inhaling through to plank, spinning all 10 toes over to the left hand side, opening up to side plank with your left hand raised. Really grinding down that right hand, keeping your shoulder nice and safe. Maybe you can drop that right knee down, come into that variation, or pick up your left foot, and then just stand on your tippy toes up your left foot, so that you're almost just behind your right knee. Turning your right foot just so it starts to point towards the back of the room a bit more. And I find it helps if I take a deep bend in my legs, and then on an inhale, I really reach over, arching my back, reach your hand up, spinning your chest up towards the sky. Feeling everything nice and open. Keep pushing that right foot, sorry, right hand into the earth, keeping your shoulder nice and safe here. Elbow pit, face front. Taking one more breath and exhale, deep bend from the legs, coming back through to plank, dropping your knees, setting them nice and wide, dropping back into your child's pose. Just taking some nice long breaths here as we find our rhythm and our breathing. We've gone from such an open, expressive expansion pose to a nice insular, relaxing pose. And in the next couple of breaths, slowly bringing your hands forward. And then just making our way into a downward facing dog. Inhale to sweep that right leg up behind you. Then exhale to bring that right knee behind that right wrist. Dropping your leg so it's 45 degrees. And then we're gonna walk that left leg back behind us, we're coming into pigeon. If the ground feels really far away in your right hip, you're welcome to pop a block underneath it. So just staying up nice and high. So we find that nice connection with our legs. We're pulling our right knee back, left hip forward. And then if you want, you can come to a sleeping pigeon, bringing your chest down, folding over that right leg. And just not, not letting go of the breath just yet. Keeping it with us as we send it to our right hip. Just starting to slow the body down. and you can let go of any expectations or challenges. Or maybe thinking about how you felt coming into that wild swing pose. It's very expressive and it's very open. Did you feel powerful or maybe did you feel vulnerable? embracing whatever your body's telling you from the practice that just is. Just taking another couple of breaths here. Now your next inhale, if you're down on the mat, just slowly making your way back up and pushing your hands into the ground, planting your, tucking your back toes, lifting your right knee, just coming back, just coming into a three-legged downward dog here. We're trying to do some circles with that right hip. And our down dog. And then placing our right foot onto the mat, lifting that left foot up behind us, and then left knee behind that left wrist. Dropping that right leg down, and then just walking that right leg back behind us. 
Staying up high as we find that engagement through our legs. Left hip back, right hip forward, squaring off, feeling that opening in our left hip before we start to fold down. So if you fold down and you lose that engagement, just come out of it, come into your high pigeon and feel that kind of catch on your legs. You're welcome to close your eyes down here. Just really let your body relax. Taking a few more breaths here. Keeping that breath with you and sending it wherever you're feeling it. And on your next inhale, just slowly bringing yourself back up. Just tucking that back toe, lifting up. Coming into your down dog, keeping your left knee bent. Let's just do a couple of circles with our last leg. And then just dropping down onto our knees and then just walking our hands back. Just coming to sit on the mat, bringing both legs out in front. And we're just going to let our legs be nice and relaxed here. So for you, if that means like me, your feet are going to drop out to either side, that's fine. Then we're just going to sit high on our sit bones here, so just moving any fleshy bits out of the way. Keeping that tummy tucked, we're going to inhale to reach our hands up, spinning our palms in, creating a nice long spine. Keep that length hinging at the hips, just folding forward over those legs. Just coming to wherever you can feel the stretch in the back of the legs. If you need to bring a block or something down to bring the, um, your leg or your mats up closer, you can. And just letting your legs, like I said, be nice and relaxed here. So if they flop out to either side, that's fine. And if you come out of that straight back, just bring yourself back up. And then just folding forward, keeping those shoulder blades down your back. Just giving our hamstrings a little bit of attention. They've worked for us during class today. It's just giving them a little stretch off. And then slowly walking our hands back up. And then we're just going to shift ourselves, just coming to lie on our back, bringing our knees into our chest. Just doing some circles with our knees just on our lower back here. And then changing direction. Then planting your feet on the ground, just crossing your right foot just above your left knee. And then maybe shiveling your hips over to the right slightly and then coming into a twist. So right foot's going to come down to the earth. And then bringing your hands just out either side. And if you want to increase the stretch, you can just drag your uh, right foot closer to your left hip. And just gazing wherever is comfortable for you. So maybe over your right shoulder, maybe up towards the sky. Just letting your body be really heavy.
breathing slowly in your next inhale, just bringing your feet back through to center. Placing your left ankle just above your right knee and then walking your hips slightly over to the left as your left foot drops to the right. Just keeping your hands down by your sides. Keep setting that left knee up towards the sky. Letting our shoulders melt down into the mat so you're rolling our shoulder blades down our back a little bit. your next breath or slow, just using your core to slightly bring your knees back through the center. And then you're just going to get your block, you're just going to lift your hips up off the ground slightly, placing your block just at your lower back. So have it on quite a low setting, so don't have it up like too high, have it quite low. And then we're just going to pick our feet up and our feet are going to go up towards the ceiling while our hips are on the block and you might find your knees and your feet start to tip slightly over your body and that's fine. So we're just coming into a supported shoulder stand here. So a nice inversion to finish off the practice. Just letting everything drain out of your legs. Making your legs feel really heavy. Get a nice deep bend in them if you need to. slowly bringing your feet back down to the mat, placing them onto the mat and just keeping them bent with the block just under your lower back just for a couple of moments. Letting your hips be really heavy in that block. We spent a lot of the class sending our hips up and away so we're going to let them just be really heavy, let them sink down into that support. Not thinking about bending through the back, just thinking about the block being there for your, for your little pelvis. And just pushing your feet lightly into the ground just to lift your hips and slide that block out from underneath you, resting your hips back down to the earth and then just walking your feet slowly out so they start to straighten. And because we've done so many heart openers in class, we're just going to bring our hands and place them on our hearts. So placing your right hand first, your left hand on top. Bringing some awareness to the area of our body that did so much for us during practice. You're welcome to keep your hands here for Shavasana or bring them alongside your body. Closing down the eyes. So exhaling out a nice long sigh out of your mouth as you Allow the mat to fully support you. Let your body come into a rest. And just enjoy a few moments of quiet in your Shavasana. <laughs> 